respected Professor Watson, Chairman uh, on the dais, and dignitaries, friends. After Professor Watson has spoken and has given his complete vision as to how information technology should be integrated with the delivery of the education system plus far-reaching changes that are needed in the higher education system, there is very little that I as a management consultant can add beyond his vision. So I think he has almost captured everything that, was, that is needed as a change management in our education system. What in the next five, ten minutes I like to do is to walk you through about some of the opportunities that are emerging uh, in the Indian market pertaining to the higher education. Uh, A, B, whenever the information technology is being introduced or has been introduced, what are the apprehensions both on the positive and the negative side uh, of both the teacher teaching community and in the universities? And last but not least, uh, from a consulting organization, people who have studied in the various universities, what do we feel that our integration with uh, the academic world can help both the private as well as the universities to grow? Often one observation that we have is uh, consulting companies are doing a huge amount of change management in the industry per se be it uh, organ trading organizations, be it in the merger and acquisitions. But hardly we find that our intellect is ever, ever used or leveraged in universities. Perhaps that's one area where we as an organization with huge amount of good quality intellectual capital can also start uh, adding some value to the changes that are almost uh, coming on the anvil in the university space. Since the topic today is on the open university, uh, I would restrict myself to that area uh, and the use of information technology as to how it has helped uh, the people uh, in the university areas. Uh, whenever we have introduced at a global level, this is uh, the first two slides are the, uh, the, the summary of the findings of a big research that was carried out in quite a few universities in U.S and where the common feedback was that as and when the information technology has been put in place, uh, people have taken the advantage of talking and collaborating at different places. They have had the access to a huge database of knowledge. They could clearly get into the deeper uh, level of training and teaching because they could surf this, uh, the, the net, they could get far more information as the teachers, and then they could impart uh, the trainings to their students. Even on the exchange of views, as Professor Watson was talking about, partnerships between various universities uh, fostered, various people on the same subject came together, they've written excellent uh, documents, and above all, whenever there has been a new scholastic uh, finding, it got diffused much faster than before. And that has resulted in the world to come closer, in the world to have much more intense discussions on around various parts, be it in the medicine or in the engineering or in economics field. On the downside of this, where the universities are having a sort of, uh, um, some sort of an inertia in adopting technology, is that perhaps the, uh, there is a feeling that mostly whenever the information technology is being introduced, speed takes over uh, the, the depth part of the, uh, the information. Uh, dissemination among the students. Second, uh, there is a neglect on basic trainings like computer science trainings or high performance computing in favor of the web. Students are merely surfing. They don't go deep into the information. The productivity of the universities is actually reducing. The quality of research is not coming up because most of the, uh, most of the information which the, is a student of statistics are in science they have got most of the templates already available, and hence they use those other templates when they do the forecasting, uh, forecasting on a research or areas of work. And this has also undermined to a large extent the intellectual property rights of the university fraternity. Last but not least, uh, there is a very strong feeling that uh, pedagogy will continue to slip from the faculty hands, and lastly, um, the university uh, setup feels that 
with the information technology coming in, it is more vendor driven as uh, the Vice Chancellor from Uttarakhand said, and hence uh, the academicians are really taking a back seat. These are the negatives, but I'm not too sure the amount of these negatives uh, would have um, been more profound than the benefits of information technology. Today, nobody would even question the role of technology in the dissemination of information or collaboration. One of the key components uh, of uh, of the information technology is uh, the e-learning uh, tools that are being introduced and also the form factors that uh, through which the entire content could be delivered, be it the mobile phones, be it the handheld devices. Today, the students could be learning from any place, anywhere, and that is the real democratization of the education. And there are a huge number of tools for professors and for students to publish their content, and this results into a lot of collaboration in terms of the problem solving and hence it creates a better environment at a much lower cost for students and st uh, teachers to collaborate. The advantages of e-learning uh, is in terms of huge amount of cost reduction. If you look at uh, the amount of investment which IGNU does in distributing its uh, world-class content uh, through various books and magazines and literature, which is huge. If the same thing is converted and is made available, uh, provided people have that number of computers as well as the other things, in an e-learning mode or in a digitized mode, the cost would be far, far less. Then it increases the access, it provides people in instantaneous convenience, and people can study at their own. Business uh, could be perhaps getting a greater benefit, and it also in, uh, empowers the students of variety of uh, uh, backgrounds to study at a different levels and at their own pace. From a pure market perspective, if we just touch this component, which is the e-learning component, in India in the last two years, one of the reports from uh, a, a leading org a research organization su suggests that at the moment the e-learning content market is just about 105 crores. In two years time frame, it is likely to increase by 10 times, which means it would be reaching almost about a 1,000 crore market in India per se. That's where the quantum jump is happening, thanks to the, uh, the, the connectivity, thanks to the penetration of computers in, in, in India, thanks to many programs that Government of India, the DIT level is uh, creating, like CSC programs and all, where content can now be downloaded comparatively easier than before. So there are a large number of organizations who are investing a huge amount of time in creating the content. Even at the Asia level, uh, the content, e-content uh, market uh, is going to increase by almost about 30 to 40 percent. No other industry uh, segment, uh, be it in the medicine or pharmaceutical, is poised for such a tremendous growth. The driving agents, uh, uh, the drivers in this is the K-12 uh, segment. But w by, uh, by doing the work in that area, in the e-learning e content space, even at the level of the medicine or, or the engineering, a lot of content is being created. Mm -hmm. And this is an, uh, putting a great amount of positive elements in terms of creating an infrastructure, both at the university level. So what it boils down to fact is that open universities in time to come, if they will not change their method of distribution of the content to the students, if they would continue delivering uh, the content through the normal uh, books uh, or uh, the, in, in, in a manuscript manner, perhaps they would be outdated. And that's a real, real threat. And therefore, it is important that most of the open universities should try and should make investments in terms of complete um, both the front end as well as the back end computerization. I'm just touching the e-learning part of it, which is the delivery part to the students. And the, the acceptance of uh, the creation of environment is one part, the creation of a good quality content so that the students at where, uh, where various places can start accessing the content and feel a, a sort of a positive element towards embracing that content is another part of it. So, so open universities, the one single change that I feel needs to be done is in terms of letting the content be, uh, be, uh, be made available to their students at ease. 
Other area uh, which is what I would like to talk about a little bit is of integration between the management community as well as uh, the universities. What is needed beyond the content part is to manage the resources uh, of a, a, a superior student experience as well as to strengthen the controls. This is where I think uh, people at uh, EY, wherein today we are advising UID Authority of India uh, to have a complete program management for the delivery of, of the unique ID numbers to almost 1.2 billion people in the nation. Uh, that's a program which ENY is running across. It has both capacity building, it has both uh, the, the, the areas of advising Mr. Nandan Nilankeni and his team as to what processes they should adopt. So if we are in that area of consulting, we do think that there are a large number of technology solutions which we can suggest to open universities for them to upscale both on their internal uh, processes, both in terms of their performance management, both in terms of doing the impact assessment as to where their students today are, what programs they have launched in, few in the past ten, last 10 years, where they have done, and perhaps creating for each university or uh, for open universities a Vision 2020 document, which would largely be a contribution from people who have been associated with the universities, people who have passed out from the universities, and who are connected with the academic world, as well as from the industry perspective, what should be the quantum change that these universities would do. So, in short, uh, I would uh, just like to humbly submit, please count on us. We would be more than happy to be associated with you. Thank you.